Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at Unraid and seeing if NVMe drives actually do provide you any benefit with data transfers to your Unraid server while those NVMe drives are in parity. In theory it should, but we're going to test it out and see what happens. So in order to do this testing we're going to need a server. And this here is PNAS, as you guys probably know because it's world famous at this point. And this is my project server that I do everything with in Unraid. Um, so in order to get all this to work, we're going to need a few things besides the server itself. We're going to need a SAS card. So this is the uh, 928, actually I don't remember. This is the 9211 8i. And then we need some cables. So these are breakout cables, mini SAS to uh, SATA. And of course we're going to need some hard drives. So the NVMe drives are right in here from our previous test. If you want to check that out in the link just below or whatever clickable. Um, so they're already in here and we're just going to kind of need to hook everything up, which should be pretty straightforward and easy because almost everything's already in here as we need it. All right, so there's a couple things we're going to have to do first. We're going to actually have to remove this graphics card. I don't have to remove it because I have plenty of PCIe lanes. I'm just really doing it to give my SAS card some breathing room uh, because it is known to get pretty toasty uh, when it's operating. So we're just going to remove the graphics card and then we'll slip in. And then we'll slip in the uh, SAS card here in its place. And we're pretty much good to go from there. Not much else to see, to be honest. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we have to do it. Oh yeah, you guys like the way I screw my penis? Okay, for anyone who's wondering, these are mini SAS to SATA cables. I get asked this question a lot, surprisingly. Um, I know there's a lot of experts out there who already identify these right off the bat, but you know, everyone's at different levels. So now you know, no excuses. Okay, so these are some of the drives I previously used. These are old laptop drives and then one nice Samsung SSD. We're not gonna use any of these, but I'm probably gonna leave them plugged in uh, anyway. And we are just going to add um, some more laptop hard drives from my old laptops or repaired laptops from when I used to people out back in the day I just kept these because I gave them newer better stuff usually and uh, they didn't need them anymore so I've just accumulated tons of laptop drives and proof to that I don't know why I have so many they're old as hell but you know what they still work to this day so we're gonna get these installed thankfully it's pretty simple but um, I just remembered I actually don't have the screws for these <sighs> so we're gonna have to get some screws oh boy so probably just gonna skip ahead to where I'm done with this part because you know screwing in hard drives isn't always that fun to watch nowadays. All right, so I talked a little bit about this Rosewell chassis in the past and I shared some of my thoughts about it with y'all. And uh, it's still a great chassis, but it's not as good as the first generation. Uh, this is like the newer generation of it. And it's pretty okay. Like, I mean, being able to like slide the hard drives in and out like this is actually really nice. But part of the problem is that I actually would rather be able to grab them from the front, not the inside of the chassis. So anyway, just a minor complaint. Um, still not really one of my recommended uh, chassis to buy, unlike uh, the previous generation. All right, just to give you guys an idea of uh, what computers we're gonna use here. So this is Filmi and PNAS is right here. So Filmi and PNAS will be working together to do all of the testing that we're gonna do today uh, to see how this works out. So that's all you need to know and we'll jump into more details in a little bit, I guess, or now, whatever, we'll figure it out. All right, just to give you guys uh, another idea of exactly what we're doing here, let's take a look at PNAS. So within Unraid, as you can see here, we have one hard drive set as parity, like I mentioned before, and then three other hard drives set as our data array. We have no hard drives in cache, and all our other drives that are in this machine are currently set as unassigned devices. Now, if we take a quick hop over to FillMy, so remember, FillMy is the server that we're gonna be using to transfer to PNAS. So we're gonna fill my PNAS uh, with this video file. Uh, so here, here's a terminal window. This is the video file that we're sending. It is a um, 45 gigabyte file, I believe. Um, I don't know what I'm doing, apparently. Yeah, 45 gigabytes. And in order to get this over to PNAS from FillMy, we're just gonna do a secure copy. Now what I expect to see when we run this command is that we're gonna start off really high, yep, 183 megabytes per second, which is really good. You can see here in the background on FillMy, we're on cockpit, we're transferring at 1.65 gigabits per second. 
So that's actually really good. Now the problem when transferring to hard drives is while we start off really strong, typically these speeds decrease as um, you're writing to parity and the disk at the same time. Uh, and that hasn't happened yet, which is really strange because it should have happened. We should be seeing 50 megabytes per second. Um, I don't know why it's going so quickly right now, but hey, you know, that's why we're testing this. All right, it looks like we're finally starting to hit that 50 megabytes per second range. That does appear to be true. Remember, we don't have cache, so um, we're not gonna be able to transfer this entire, entire, entire file um, in one go, which makes sense. Yep, and I think what we're gonna see here is that we're gonna get to about 30-ish um, megabytes per second and that looks to be true. So this is gonna take about 16 minutes to transfer. So obviously, you know, if you're at home and you have a really small cache, let's say it's like 215 gigabytes or maybe 250, or hell, maybe even 512, what you'll, what you'll see is you'll see this really nice burst, right? And then you're like, oh wow, this is transferring. But then when the cache, when the cache's cache runs out or the DRAM fills, whatever, whatever that, however that works, when the DRAM fills, uh, what you're gonna see is a huge drop in performance. Now you'll still probably hit like 100 megabytes per second or so, um, which is still really good, but it's not as good as it could be. And so that's why we're kind of thinking here that maybe if we put an NVMe drive uh, in the parity disk, we'll have better IOPS, which will allow us um, to have better sustained writes. Um, so the way that Unraid works is anytime you transfer a file over, it writes to whatever disk you're sending the data to and parity at the same time. And because parity calculations take so much effort, that's why you see that huge dip in performance, at least in this very specific case, because we're not using any cache. Um, this is typically how it works. Um, so we're going to let this sit and then we'll come back to it um, when it's done. We'll do this a couple more times. This is the furthest thing from a scientific test, um, but we're gonna just do this a few more times, get a good idea of what it's like, and then we'll switch over to the NVMe drive. Okay, so I changed my mind. What I decided to do is actually make this a bit more scientific, so that way I don't have to work very hard to record the data, and I can just make the computer do it for me. So much like in the previous test with the all NVMe array, and Unraid, uh, I created a script that basically copied the file that I wanted over uh, to the PNAS repeatedly over and over and over and over again. And that was how I uh, recorded my results. So if we take a look here on Cockpit, so this, again, this is on FillMy Cockpit. Um, here is the script I created. It is incredibly similar um, to the one that we used from the previous test. So. Literally, it's a while loop, so it's just going to repeat over and over. We're going to do this 50 times, and while this loop is less than 50, this is just going to repeat. And then I went ahead and put a sleep interval of 30 seconds, so each time it finishes doing one copy, it's going to wait 30 seconds and then do the next one. And then, of course, the file here, uh, that's the name of it, and it's going to increment the file name by one, so we know that it has done this 49 times, or 59 times, whatever, how many ever times. Uh, and then of course, it's gonna spit that out into a results.csv file that we can later look at uh, to see what our average transfer speed was. All right, so we're just going to kick this off and sit back and relax, and we should be good to go. Um, so we'll check back in however long this takes. I imagine it's going to take quite some time, like possibly hours, uh, maybe the rest of the night. So uh, call it quits here and we'll, we'll check back in. See ya. Okay, so I just realized I'm still a dummy and don't know how to do math too well. So if we have three terabytes of space, that's 3,000 gigabytes. And if we divide that by 45, that gives us about 66 total transfers we can do. And um, yes, I plan on filling the array. So this is going to take some time. Do I need to fill the array? No, but I feel like if I fill the array uh, to the brim, that will give me basically the best results or the most possible uh, transfers. So that way when I average all the transfer transfers together, I should have a pretty nice uh, number. And we're gonna do the same thing when we switch over to NVMe uh, parity as well um, and to 
see exactly how that plays out. So, uh, you know, now that I've started over, I've managed to accomplish none. Uh, it looks like the first one is about six, 11 minutes, 12 minutes from completing. That number keeps jumping around. And once it's done, then we will have, uh, we'll, I don't know, continue forward like usual. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up a little bit while I can. The next day. So it's been about 14 hours and I've only managed to transfer about 42 files or 42 copies of one file over from Filmi to Pingnaz. And obviously that it's that's a long, 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 long time. Uh, from what I've seen, it's pretty consistent so far, uh, but we'll take a look at those results later. So we're just gonna cut it short. Uh, we're supposed to go all the way to 66 copies, but we're gonna go to, uh, we're stopping at 42 because it's just taking way too long. And honestly, I just kinda wanna get through this. So uh, right now, if we take a look at um, Unraid or PNAS, I'm gonna switch over to an NVMe uh, SATA, or sorry, an NVMe drive uh, for parity, and we're just gonna go, uh, we're just gonna start it up. So one thing that I that I did off screen is I actually went ahead and deleted all of the previous transfers. So we're gonna be starting fresh, and I've already edited my script uh, to create a new CSV file uh, for us to look at later. So that is good to go. It apparently has 2,000 writes. I'm not sure how that's possible. And um, let's just go ahead and, and kick things off here. So copy script. And as you can see, it is apparently doing something. So we're gonna switch over to the networking tab and littering and, and so we're transferring at about 1.69 gigabits per second. Um, that's pretty good. Um, we'll see what that is like or what the results will be like. Actually, we can take a quick peek. So let me uh, bring up another terminal here. So let's do this. We're gonna SSH into Filmi. Sorry, that's the wrong server. And uh, I don't really remember my password, but I think this is it. And uh, let's do a tail-f results uh, NVMe, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so it is currently copying at 163 megabytes per second. Um, so that seems that seems pretty good. That seems a lot faster already. And it's estimating to complete in three minutes and 41 seconds. So I think earlier when we were doing this test, we were seeing that it was supposed to complete in about 14 minutes per run, uh, which is obviously an incredibly long time for a 50, I'm sorry, 45 gigabyte file via 10 gig networking. So uh, it looks like we've already got some improvement there, but how long will it last? Who knows, I don't know. So with that, we will pick up again later to see what happens with all of this testing. If you skipped ahead to this part, good job. The results are that when we have a hard drive as parity and all hard drives as data, we were seeing an average of 62 megabytes per second between all 42 transfers. That's pretty good. That's actually a lot higher than what I've perceived in the past, and I'm a little surprised by those results. Now, for the NVMe drive as parity and all hard drives as uh, data, what we saw was 81 megabytes per second, which is not that much higher than I thought it would be. I was hoping to hit you know, something like 123 megabytes per second, but I guess not. However, that's still a lot better than uh, just using a hard drive as parity. But this is just one test with one type of SSD. So we're using TLC NVMe drives as parity, and the host or Filmi is using a TLC NVMe drive as well. So there could be some problems there, and I didn't test any other brand of SSD, most notably any MLC or TLC uh, or newer TLC drives. So take all this with a grain of salt because this could vary wildly depending on the architecture of the actual NVMe drive in use. And this again is just one test. One, that's definitely not two, one test. So pretty interesting results. Um, I think I'd like to hit this again with a better brand. I know I've said this again, especially uh, when you consider my previous video where I talked about getting newer NVMe drives, but honestly, they're just really expensive. And although people are saying that the price of NVMe has gone down or flash storage has gone down, I haven't seen a decrease at all. Now I've seen some sales, but I haven't seen anything that strikes out to me as a decrease in price. Most of the drives I'm keeping an eye on that I really want, haven't changed price. And in fact, in some cases, like the Samsung 
970 Pro has actually gone up in price by only $20. But I wonder where these people are buying all this cheap flash storage because I'd like to get my hands on it. Anyway, that's besides the point. So drop a comment below. Let me know what you thought of this and if you'd like to see another retest but with a different brand of SSD or NVMe. And as always, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.